This is Colleen Talty, and uh, here are some shocking numbers. We all have somewhere around 35 trillion skin cells. We have roughly 2,000 to 8,000 taste bud cells. And in our brains, we have 100 billion neurons. Yes, that three pound thing in between your ears has 100 billion cells. I mean, that's the way of a two slice toaster, but anyway. Every cell on the inside or outside of a person has a function. Our taste buds allow us to taste. The cells on the inside of our intestines allow us to absorb nutrition from the food that we eat. In other words, these cells are differentiated. However, there's this one mysterious body part that is composed of cells that have no designated function at all. Stem cells. When a child is born, that umbilical cord that was keeping that child alive is composed of undifferentiated cells, meaning they have no force telling them what they're going to become. It's basically like an undecided college student. But in a way, that's what makes these cells extraordinary, because they can be manipulated to become anything. From a liver to a heart, these cells have the potential to save a life. Now everyone, the end. She's a 19-year-old freshman who attends Stony Brook University. She's made of 37.2 trillion cells, and she's my sister. But what you might not know, just looking at the picture, is that she doesn't have a colon. And a colon, as some of you might already know, is referred to as your large intestine, and is important in absorbing nutrition. Now, last year, Erin was diagnosed with severe ulcerative colitis, which in English means a colon was diseased. Now, after months of experimenting with medication, she finally decided that getting it removed would be the best option. She now lives with a colostomy bag, and will continue to live with it for the next few months. A colostomy bag acts as an external colon in a way. But the point is, she had to completely alter the way she lives, which begs the question, what if? What if she didn't get sick? What if she beat the odds of getting diagnosed? What if she could have cured herself? Let me explain. These magic stem cells are created with no real purpose, meaning they can be turned in any which way to create something new, like a colon. However, the possibilities are endless. If someone had damaged retinas and feeding their vision, the retina growing process would start by collecting skin cells, for instance, extracting what is known as the IPS, or the induced pluripotent. Now from there, the stem cells are then taken and differentiated, or given the role of a retinal cell. Now, by doing this, someone could develop a completely different outlook on life. But, like, literally, they're actually getting new retinal cells. <laughs> now, I'm sure some of you might be thinking, as I once did, why aren't stem cells used more often to solve medical issues? And the answer to that lies in the misunderstanding of the public. Now, many view the potential of stem cell research as synonymous with cloning, or the argument, it might start off with a few organs, but within a few years, people will definitely be able to make copies of themselves. Not true. So here I am telling you today that cell synthesis from stem cells is not at all the same as cloning. And in my personal opinion, the benefits outweigh the fear of what if. However, not only is the misunderstanding of the public, but many believe that growing a new organ is religiously wrong. For instance, Getting cool, right? many believe that these embryo cells have the potential to develop into a person, and therefore should not be used for one's own selfishness. Now, this argument that these cells have the potential to develop into a person has led people to feel as if conducting research would be inhumane. However, when we look at what happens to these cells at a hospital, they are discarded as medical waste. The purpose of the umbilical cord is to sustain the life of the fetus. So who are we to discard that immense power along with medical waste? Perhaps these cells have more life to sustain in the form of a new heart, skin graft, retina cell, or even a new colon. Now, with research, scientists would be able to take advantage of the possibilities of stem cells, which could lead someone like Erin to live a better life. Erin now lives a healthy life, but she had to face a lot of challenges. Last year, she missed 32 days of school, much of that time having been spent in the hospital. But she's not alone. More than 750,000 other Americans have been in the same position. Now, along the line of organ failure, kidney transplants had some trustworthy statistics. Within the first month of the operation, 97% are functioning properly. Now, after the third month, that number drops down to an 83%. So that means someone who is a part of the 97 successful 
percent were now a part of the 14 percent who are unsuccessful. To those 14 percent, they went from living the life they've been waiting for, having to wait an average another three to five years for another call from the transplant center. Anything can happen within those three to five years. So although growing a new organ isn't an overnight process either, it is significantly more scheduled and expected. So I'm going to leave you with this. The next time something seems questionable, look into it. Develop your own opinion. If we all did that, maybe stem cell research would have been looked at from a more positive lens and would have been seen as more of a priority. It's too late for Aaron to benefit from this research, but let's not live in fear of what can be. Thank you and have a great evening.